Hey guys, welcome back to the Prehistoric Life Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Crawford, and today, since it is December, I have decided to do a mammal. I don't know if I'm going to do that for next week because I don't know what other mammals I have really written down, and this is probably the only one I have. So, this might be the only mammal episode. This is, for for now, there will be some in the future. Don't get me wrong. This is Andrew Sarkis. So as you can see, it is a lot more like a dog. It's got like a dog snout. It's got very big teeth, very powerful back legs, and seemed like it was a quadrupedal, very small, fuzzy tail. It it's fringe shaped. If you get that meme, you get it. But it was very dog like in look and looks. Um so let's get into the measurements. As I'm going to leave this up so you can see. And very prevalent ears. Um, it was about 12 feet long, weighed from 500 to 1,000 pounds, and was about 8 feet tall. So this thing was probably as big as like, or as taller than like the tallest humans. And I'm thinking that's like from here all the way down to its feet. Um it's that it was other animals, dead animals, small creatures, basically whatever it can get its teeth on. Uh, it is a carnivore. Uh, its fossils were found in Mongolia. Let me double check that. Um, yeah, Mongolia. It is a medium carnivore. It lived in forest, plains, forest, plains kind of area, and desert plains-ish kind of things, as you can see in the background here. Something like that. Something like this. And I'm pretty sure this is like walking with beasts or some kind of old documentary. It lived in pa- uh, lived in packs of 1 to 2, possibly even 3 to 4, kind of like a wolf. Um it pounces on em- enemies/prey, slash prey. it uses claws and teeth as weapons. Its name's its name means Andrew's king, which is good to know. Uh it was discovered by Kan Chin Peo in 1923, and Henry Farfield Osborne wrote the description in 1924. Let me um, let me pull up my secret wiki page. It's not so secretive. It's uh, prehistoricwildlife.com. So, as you can see, uh, its total size was uncertain due to the lack of remains. Uh, a skull is, but the skull is 83 centimeters long, which is massive. And the only fossil representation is the skull. So, my estimates are like guesstimates, if anything. They're not really estimates, they're more like prediction kind of things. In popular culture, especially at the turn of the 20, <clears throat> 20th and 21st century, Andrew Sarkis, is it Sarkis or Sukis? Sarkis. Andrew Sarkis has been presented as a huge predator, similar in form to other quadrupedal meat eating mammals, like lions and tigers and bears. Well, not bears, probably. But. But powerfully built like a big cat or even a bear. No, like a bear. Take that back then. However, despite its this reconstruction becoming uh, very familiar in the public, in the public consciousness, paleontologists are far more cautious as so far only the skull of this animal is known. The popular reconstruction is based upon the concept of that for a long time, Andrew Sarkis was envisioned as a large relative of Mesonyx, 
a meat-eating predator that is often described as wolf-like. Although it actually appeared long before the emergence of true wolves, Later interpretations of Andrew Sarkis, however, one of the best known being in 2009 studied by Michelle Spaulding and Maureen A. O'Learn and John Getze. I'm probably butchering those names, so bear with me. Have since concluded that Andrew Sarkis probably isn't that closely related to meso- mesoonics. In fact, today Andrew Sarkis has been widely considered to be closer to primitive hippos or even etilodonts. Give me a moment. Hmm. It didn't work. Oh. It's just something that looks like Andrew Sukas, due to its long jaws and wide cheekbones. The exact diet of Andrew Sukas has also been questioned as the previous older apex predator theories don't carry as much weight as they used to. Although the jaws would have had tremendous powerful muscles, as indicated by the size of the cheekbones, most of the teeth in the mouth are not particularly well adapted for any one purpose. The forward canines are the largest and are most useful for getting a grip on things, or perhaps in the case of a carnivore, to deliver a killing bite, such such as puncturing the cranium of a prey animal. Jesus, this thing would just bite through your skull? Because the type of specimen skull was found in what would have been a coastal environment during the Eocene. Andrew Sarkis has been presented as a beach comber, comber. I say comber, it's comber. Here, Andrew Sarkis m- may have had a Dorophagus diet. That means it ate shellfish that it dug out with its forward teeth. Although it may have included animals like turtles as well as washed up carrion. Carrion. However, while the skull proves that Andrew Sukas was active in coastal areas, it would be a mistake to assume that it was limited to them without the evidence of further remains. So this is the problem with only finding one remain. So we've only found like the skull of this thing. Not even that, like the upper jaw. So they're saying that it might have combed the beach to get shellfish out. But it, we're drawing all these conclusions without enough actual data. So if we find more of these things, more complete remains, possibly it fighting something, then we'll know that it was like a predator or what did it call it? A derfagus. Adorophiacus? I don't know. Which is the shellfish eater. So we need more data. That's basically what we need. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so not much is actually known about this creature. Just basically that it's got an upper skull. And it's very, it could be like a, and it's like hippo-like. Um, so that it could be that this bad boy was like a primitive hippo. Because we see things like megafauna, like uh, mammoths are primitive elephants. Woolly rhinoceros slash elasmotherium is primitive rhinos, but... These guys could have been primitive hippos, so they very well could have been herbivores that just weren't to mess with. I mean, I don't, we only have the upper jaw of it, of like one, so this is from 2015, so, so I don't really know. But I mean, 
we only have the upper jaw of it. So we don't really know. It could have been hippo like in it whenever other animals messed with it and just <laughs> right on the skull, squashing their brains out and could have very well ate the corpse. Who knows? It could have combed the beach for um whatchamacallit, shellfish, but it could have also actively hunted for whatever whatever else. I mean, we don't actually know, and that's primarily because we don't have the data. So before we start drawing a bunch of conclusions, maybe we should go find some more of these things. I mean, this is just a depiction. We don't actually know if this is accurate. The only part that we'd really know is the upper skull. And that's because that's the only part we found. For all we know, the Andrew Sukis, Andrew Sarkis, what we've found is another species, and it's like some weird deformed version. We don't actually know. We only have the upper skull of one of these guys. So these are possible sounds that somebody here. Let me just open this in YouTube. Let's see if this will work. We're not watching TikTok ads. That Rexy Montero. So go check out there. They might have other dinosaurs. But. Or, well, not even dinosaurs, just prehistoric cre uh, creatures. So this is what Andrew Sarkis is thought to, quote-unquote, sound like. So, this thing seems to have some kind of snarl like a tiger, yet it sounded kind of like a boar pig kind of thing at the end there, if that makes sense. So, granted, again, we only have like the upper skull of one specimen, so we just need more data on this thing. Excuse me. So we don't really have that much data to go off of. Except for we do know that this has been carbon dated to the Lutui. Mm, you got me beat. Give me a moment. Let me pull up the Eocenes. 
Uh, where is Eocene? Eocene, Eocene, right here. Didn't I have a little magnifying glass or something? Meh, whatever. So, you've got Eocene right here. It is the Lutu, Lutuetian to the Perobian, Perobanian part of the Eocene. So, basically, the middle to the late Eocene era. That's these right here for those of you who are wondering. These... These three. And that is about... Let me unfold this. I don't even need to fold it because the Eocene's all the way up here. So these guys are past the dinosaurs. They're not even like dinosaur mammals, if that makes sense. They're late, late... Well, I guess early compared, depending on how you look at it. But they lived about 47.8 to 41.2 million years ago, so... Like I said, the Lutuetian to the Parabonian part of the Eocene, which is whenever that mass mammal explosion really took up after the dinosaurs. Oh, well, that was more just Pliocene and then Eos. That whole area was main mainly that megafauna, that superfauna, megafauna time. Um, but. <sighs> I mean, yeah, there's not much to say on this thing, primarily just because we haven't found a lot of specimens. And that's what I'm using here. What? Andrew Sarkis remains have been found. So this might be outdated. Because it is from 2015, and that was like... I don't feel like doing that math. That was a while back. No complete skeletons have been found. Only its skull, which measures 33 inches long... Paleontologists have built up the impersonation of the rest of the animal's body from knowledge of its skull and its relation to the bear-like mesonics, mesonics. But we do know that that is wrong now. The mesonic, meso, mesonics, mesonics, one of them, is not a relative of this thing. But yeah, as we know, this this probably is wrong. This interpretation is wrong. Because it's similar. My drawing is just not that good compared to actual like photography. But it, it's similar to this. So. There, there's not. We're not. We're going off like this much of it. And we're trying to find all of it. We got like. Three or four percent of it. And we're trying to find the other 96 or 97 percent. So the actual interpretations of this dinosaur are still kind of up for that debate. Primarily just because we don't have all, uh, not even all, just enough data on it. Because we don't even have all the data on T, like T-Rex and things. But we still have a pretty darn good idea of what that bad boy looked like. But this, we have like the upper skull. Of like two or three specimen tops probably. So we don't really have that data to go off of to really know what this is this thing was like. So that's Andrew Sarkis. Sorry if this episode was kind of a bummer because we don't have all the data on this on these bad boy bad boys. But yeah. Still very interesting. I mean I, I still think it's cool, but and I'd love to be the one to go try and find the rest of this thing, but we just need more data on it. Well, I'm your host, Eric Crawford. This has been Prehistoric Life Podcast. Signing off. I'll see you all next time for some, well, I would say Christmas, but they will be the first episodes of the new year probably. Probably not. No, probably not. Well, I'm your host, Eric Crawford, signing off. Remember, keep it prehistoric.
Goodbye.